Hi everyone, Tom here from Frontend Beginners and in this video we'll look at how to vertically align items using CSS Flexbox. For this example I've set up a simple flex container that's 1000 pixels wide by 700 pixels high and given it a grey background. Inside it I've got three child flex items each with a width and height of 150 pixels. Currently we're working in the default flex direction of row so our flex items are positioned side by side in the horizontal row direction. To vertically align our items when working in the row direction, we need to use the Align Items property. Align Items works along the cross axis, which always runs perpendicular to the flex direction. As our flex direction is currently set to row, the cross axis runs vertically, so Align Items will affect the vertical alignment. Align items accepts a number of values including flex start, flex end, center, stretch and baseline. By default, align items has a value of stretch which stretches our flex items to the full height of the parent flex container. Because I've given my flex items an absolute height of 150 pixels, which we can see here in the CSS, this stretch behavior is overridden. If I remove this height from my CSS, you'll see that my flex items have now stretched to fit the height of the container. This is the default behavior. I'll put the height back into my CSS and move on to another value. The Align Items property is applied to the parent flex container. In our example here, I have a div with a class of container, so let's target our container div here in the CSS. Let's use an Align Items value of center. As we can see in the browser, our flex items are now centrally aligned along the vertical axis. Align items flex start will align items at the start or top of the vertical axis. When our flex items have a specified height, flex start becomes the default value. Flex end does the opposite and positions items at the end or bottom of the container. And baseline aligns items so that the baseline of the text is aligned. But this value only has an effect when items are of different heights or with different baselines, which is not the case in my example here. In the previous examples, all of our flex items are aligned together as a group. If we want to change the vertical alignment of individual flex items, we need to use the align self property. While align items is applied to the parent flex container and affects every flex item at once, align self is applied to individual items and works only on those specific items. Let's begin by removing our align items property from our parent flex container and we'll start by targeting our second flex item. To do this, I'm using the nth of type pseudo selector, but you could use a unique ID or class. We'll give this second item an align self property of flex end. Looking in the browser, we can see that flex items one and three remain in the default position, but item two is now positioned at the bottom or end of the container. Going one step further, let's now target flex item three and give this an align self property of center. Our three flex items are now individually aligned along the vertical axis. Let's delete these align self properties and change our flex direction in the parent container to column. As the main axis always follows the flex direction and align items only works along the cross axis, we'll need to use a different property when working in the column direction. This time, we'll use justify content, which aligns flex items together along the main axis. 
Justify content is applied to the parent flex container and accepts several values. The most likely choices are justify content flex start, which is the default position at the start or top of the container. Next, we have a value of center, which aligns items vertically together in the center of the vertical axis. And finally, flex end, which aligns items at the end or bottom of the vertical axis. When working with a flex direction of column, vertically aligning individual items along the main axis can be a little more challenging. Unlike the cross axis where we have align self, there is no justify self property in CSS Flexbox that works along the main axis. To affect individual items, we need to use auto margins. Let's remove our justify content property for a moment so that everything returns back to its default position. As an example, let's imagine that we want items one and two positioned in this default flex start location at the top of the container, but we want item three down here at the bottom. To do this, we'd simply need to give item three a margin top value of auto. So we'll target our third flex item and give it a margin top of auto. As we can see in the browser, items one and two remain at the top of the container and item three is now at the bottom. This is because item three has an auto top margin, which is equal to all of the available free space along the vertical axis. If we inspect this item with the Chrome DevTools, the light orange area above shows the top margin that's now attached to item three, separating it from the other two items. By separating items in this way using auto margins, we're able to creatively lay out our flex items along the main axis. I think that just about covers the basics of vertical alignment in CSS Flexbox. If you're working in the row direction, you can use the align items and align self properties to position your items vertically. When working in the column direction, you'll need to use justify content and auto margins. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer as soon as possible. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.